Welcome to the Jill on Money podcast. It is Tuesday, June 29th, and we are here to try to take the mystery out of your financial life. The way we do that is we answer your questions. Either I read your emails or we get you on live. The thing about the email, which I mean, I love the emails. I really do. It's been fantastic. And you guys are so generous and just taking the time to ask these questions. But our email box is, our inbox is bulging. Mark is no longer fretting about it ever since we had um, our guest who got him to calm down about it. Cal Newport told him to calm down. But if you want to jump the line, you've sent us an email perhaps, and we haven't gotten to it yet. It's just because there's so many emails. And if you want to jump the line, all you have to do is resend it. Just forward it back to us and say, I want to come on the air live with you. That's how you jump the line. Isn't it great? It's sort of a legit way to be a line jumper, which is, by the way, not the kind of person I like very much. I don't like people who kind of shove their way up into the front of the line. Okay. So if you want to jump the line, let us know. That is what Maureen did. She didn't jump the line, but she did say she wanted to come on the air live. Maureen is on the line from New York. Hi, Maureen. What can we do for you? Okay. I have some questions about our traditional IRAs, which also encompass some 401ks and doing Roth conversions. Uh, We have about 2.6 million in all of our retirement funds, of which about 400 is Roth IRA. We've been retired for about two years. And so last year we started doing conversions um, to keep us up to the 22% tax bracket. And I'm wondering if there's just a, a rule of thumb of how much we should be looking to convert mm. to Roth. So tell me a little bit about yourselves. You've been retired for two years. There's a selves, so there's a plural. So you yeah. and a spouse, how old are you? Oh, and we're both 67. Okay. Are you collecting Social Security? I am. And I collect about 2000 a month. Uh, my husband is going to wait till he's 70. And he has a small pension that's about 2000 a month. And he's collecting that s- pension currently? Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay. he's collecting that pension. Yes. Okay. How much money do you have that is in non-retirement assets? What are you paying the tax? Uh, how are you paying the tax that's due on the money you are converting? Um, we have about three hundred and fifty thousand in cash. Okay. Is that it in terms of the cash? Yes. Yeah, that's it. The idea here is that we really need to make sure that. Many people who are in retirement, if you're listening, that you have liquidity. And what do we mean by that? I know that you want to convert as much as you can, but you know, you're going to have, you have a big tax bill as a result, right? In your look ahead, um, let's just talk about where you are right now that you've got four grand a month coming in in income, right? And so I'm wondering how much do you need when it comes to retirement income? What's your, what's the need? I would say it's somewhere in the area of 125,000 a year. Okay. So you need 10 grand a month. Yeah. And so right now, what are you doing to pay for that gap between the social security, the pension and the need? Where are you drawing Uh, from? Right from the taxable account. Okay. So, I mean, we cannot drain too much of your liquidity. We just can't. If you had $3 million in your taxable account, then I might say there it's not really there's a rule of thumb, but the rule of thumb is that we cannot leave you with, with too little money in this account. So um, at the very least, what I would say is at age 70, okay, what will the Social Security benefit be that he'll claim? Oh, it'll be about 4000 a month. So at that time, then you'll have much more of money, you know, coming in. You'll have eight out of your 10 or 11,000 that you'll need, right? So that's good news. So what we need to make sure is no matter what right now, there's a, there's two years of your need that is set aside. So for right now, the next two years, essentially, I want to make sure that you have enough money. Okay. And that means money in case you need a car or something bad happens and also the income that you have to fund. So then if you said to me, okay, well, we got that set. I'm going to pretend, let's just say that's 150 grand total ish. Okay. And now you have $200,000 that's left to pay taxes when you do your conversion. And so what I want you to do is to back into this instead of saying, 
I'm going to convert up to my tax bracket. It's really saying over the next three years before he has his social security kick in, how much can we convert and not drain our cash? That's the real issue, right? Because I cannot afford and you can't afford to have too little money accessible to you at this point in your life. So let's guess that of that, let's say that how much did you have you been doing um, in the conversion so far? How much was the, um, the gross we, amount? The last year we converted a little over 100000 Okay. And so, you know, you ended up, uh, unfortunately for you, hello, New York State, you've got a nice fat tax. So presumably you paid about 35 grand of that in taxes. Is that right? Um, Maybe a little more? uh, It was a little less because we we were able to itemize because we uh, Mm -hmm. did a donor advised fund. So great. Yeah, so we did that. We we fund the donor advised fund every two or three years. And so Mm -hmm. we timed it for that reason and everything. Right. So, okay. So that was great. So perfect. So, so if we said that you could keep doing about, I don't know, uh, let's say a hundred to, I think a hundred is probably not a bad number. Maybe it's one twenty for the next few years. So you stay in the 22. I wouldn't, by the way, I wouldn't go crazy if you actually ended up in the 24% bracket for a little bit of the money, it wouldn't kill you. It's it's fine. It's not going to be a ton of money, you know, it, it's you know, because of pro- the way progressive rates work. I think about 100 or 120 grand, maybe you do a little bit more in the years that you're funding the donor advised fund, then you will, you know, hopefully by the time he is collecting social security that you'll have, uh, you know, seven, 800 grand in the Roth. And then at 70, you know, you'll, you have to reassess at 70, right? Cause then you have all that income. We see where tax rates have landed. Maybe you'll be able to do a little bit more, who knows, but then he's going to start his required minimum distribution at his age 72 and you'll be not so far behind. But I think that that's sort of the general game plan. Now, have you guys made any decisions around living? Are you going to stay where you are? Do you have homes? Like, what, what's your guess here? Well, well, we own our home and we don't have a mortgage on it. So we're, we're not really sure what we're going to do. And I guess my other question was gifting to our children. We have two kids and we do like to give them money. And I wanted your thoughts about Um, if we give them money out of our retirement account and have the tax withheld out of the retirement account so that we're not taking it out of our taxable account, what do you think of that strategy? And we're talking about ten to fifteen thousand dollars for each child. How what what's their tax bracket? They're higher. They're higher. Oh, I like your kids. So why are you gifting if they're making so much money? Uh, because give it to them now while they can use it, you know. But they but they have money, right? Do they oh, really yes. need it right this second? They wouldn't turn it down. Well, who would? But yes. I'm just saying you're young. I wouldn't be gifting so quickly right now. Okay. I, I'll tell you why. You don't have a ton of liquidity. You have a lot of money in retirement assets. And, you know, if you choose later on, maybe when your husband starts getting the required minimum distribution, you may want to actually skip that distribution because you may not need that money and send that to charity, not the donor advised fund, right? Straight to the charity. So you could do the qualified charitable deduction if that still exists. Who knows? But if your kids don't need the money right now, I hate for you. Why are you paying the taxes right now? Like, I just feel like it's like, eh. I mean, you could, but I guess what you're saying is you want to arbitrage the fact that you're in a lower tax bracket. So you could potentially, yeah, okay, if you're, I I hear that I'm never going to convince you otherwise. So sure, why not? You can pull it from your retirement account. Don't go above 24% though, because in the years when you do that, you're going to pop over 24%. If you want to do that, go ahead and do that. Well, who am I to say? Is there any reason why you're going to stay in that home or downsize or do anything like that? Well, you know, um, we, we, our children live one in Massachusetts, one here in New York. And so we want to be close to the kids. It, we have a big house. We don't need the house uh, mm. to be this big. But so we, we're open to relocation, but it's kind of hard to figure out where that would be. 
Um, why don't we get the Massachusetts one to move to New York? Because mm. if if they if you have grandchildren if for any reason and they turn out to be Red Sox fans, I think that's bad for you. I think it's bad for you, Joe Juju for a New Yorker, don't you think? We're Mets fans, so yes, really. Mark. We have another another one among us. We are, and, and it's a, it's difficult, isn't it? It's it's a it's a burden to carry. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think you sound like you're in great shape. If you decide, how much is the house worth right now? Uh, Six fifty. I mean, look, mm-hmm. if you decide that you want to do something else, that's fine. It, you know, obviously, the reason why I'm focusing on the house is that's a source of liquidity, also. So you never know. That said, uh, I don't know. I think it's, it, it sounds like you're in great shape. So um, I, I don't want to rob you of the joy of giving your money away because I know that makes parents very happy. And you've done a great job of saving and you're not going to spend all your money anyway. So fantastic. Well done. You and your husband should pat yourselves on the back, have a little uh, glass of wine tonight and toast yourselves because you've done a great job. And so I think that's the, the game plan here. So remember, liquidity first conversion second. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. A pleasure. Thanks for joining us today. If you would like to be like Maureen, all you need to do is send us an email. It's easy. Ask Jill at jillonmoney.com. Ask Jill at jillonmoney.com. And if you're on the website, maybe you're uh, checking out my book. It's still available. The dumb things smart people do with their money. 13 ways to right your financial wrongs. If you're on the website buying the book, you might also have a question and you hit the contact button. Boom, you're done. It's perfect. All right. If you have anything on your mind, just send it to us because really we are here to take the burden off of you. I know it sounds crazy, gang, but even people who have a lot of money tend to get really freaked out about money. All right. And I know it seems nuts, but we really want you to know that we are here to help you unburden yourself. Please put your hands metaphorically on someone's back and practice our mantra, grit, growth, grace. We'll talk to you tomorrow.